Hello my friends and channel subscribers, Greg here from Brisbane, Australia with another uncut, unedited, no ball video. Today's video is about a SATA heat pump dryer one year after almost two, three times a week use. It's a lot of use for something budget like that. And would you believe a SATA heat pump dryer video is my most watched video on my channel. First of all, I would like to say thank you for community. You're not only watching my video, you're also asking questions. I feel like I'm helping and uh, it's really inspiring when you can be useful to community out there. So thank you for watching. Thank you for everyone who subscribed, like my videos. That's what is driving my channel. So in this video, I'll try to answer all your questions one year later after first use of this dryer. Uh, to sum up, I'm still impressed, but there's a little gotchas. So please stay until the end and I'll try to answer all your questions. I did not create any specific video for each question because there are many questions, but as we're coming to one year since I start using it, there are a lot of things to unpack. So stay with me. Now, first of all, would I, uh, I would like to describe why I bought this dryer and not any other dryer. Reminder to those who didn't watch my previous videos, I had Samsung heat pump dryer. I bought it from the same place. I'm using appliances online. First of all, I don't have any affiliation with them. I don't have any kickbacks. They just got phenomenal service. They come to your place, they unwrap the uh, device and they install it for you. So I had really good experience with them in the past. That's why I bought my Samsung heat pump dryer. And when circumstances changed, I bought a SATA. So I use my Samsung heat pump dryer for five years. It is still functional. I think it's entering six year now. Uh, it's a little bit slowing down, but it's still functional. Mind you, I pay for a Samsung heat pump dryer back then close to $1,700. It's a lot of money for something that allegedly saving electricity. And it was, I think, one of the first iteration of uh, Samsung heat pump dryer. It had uh, six energy stars, so same as SATA. And if you did not watch my video of comparing two of those, I'll put link uh, above there. Card should pop up and you can watch that video. By today's video about SATA. First of all, uh, I ask so many questions is, do I regret buying one? And how is it compared to Samsung after using it for a while? So uh, let's delineate two things. I still believe that Samsung is a better build heat pump dryer. What I mean by better build, you know, like it's like when you buy a cheaper car and more expensive car, when you close the door, when you close your bonnet, when you're driving it, you really feel that subtle differences in uh, quality of build. Same with the dryers. Mind you, it does not affect the functionality. So uh, yes, I feel like Samsung still invests much more in a, a nice feel of use. So you feel that you've got uh, almost like a premium appliance. When a SATA, it is cheap appliance. It doesn't feel cheap and nasty, but you will notice if you ever used expensive dryer, it feels cheap. Again, it does not affect functionality. I still believe a SATA functions same, if not better than Samsung. I'm really happy the way that dries my clothes, right? So it's the first answer. Would I buy it again after a year? Yes, I would. Now, this is a really good time to uh, address another question. Uh, there's a couple of people already approached me and say, would you make a video about eight kilogram uh, a SATA uh, heat pump drive? Because this one version is seven. And I had no idea that there's an eight kilo version and I don't have any room or uh, I guess financial capacity to buy another dryer. But if a starter watches this video would like to supply me eight kilo dryer, I'm more than happy to test drive it in the report. If not, if some of you who already purchased eight kilo a SATA driver, uh, a heat pump driver, dryer, would like to collaborate and create a video of subtle difference between seven and eight kilos, I'm really more than happy to collaborate in the video and it would be really fantastic for the community. Now, 
uh, it's not something that I endorse, but uh, people asking me how I manage with 10 kilogram uh, washer and 7 kilogram uh, uh, heat pump dryer. So here's my trick. Uh, again, I'm not endorsing it, but uh, the drum and 10 kilo washer is way smaller than 10 kilogram uh, heat pump dryer. And there's a reason for that because while you're drying, you need uh, your clothes not to be cramped, you need to be fluffy. But the, the drum in Asata is really giant. Even putting 10 kilograms of washing, and I do full washes, uh, it dries perfectly. I don't feel ever the washing is uh, jammed together hardly. So I think you can easily fit uh, more than 10 kilogram washing there, but I think you can avoid easily uh, uh, manufacturer's uh, warranty by uh, jamming it. What I'm trying to say, if some of you have uh, 7, 8, 9 and 10 kilogram washers, your washing still perfectly fit in 7 kilogram dryer. Uh, I'm talking about specifically about a SATA. So what I'm trying to say is if your choice between 7 and 8 and your only concern is that extra killer would give you more opportunity to dry, I would just um, say, look, if 7 kilograms is cheaper, it's a tested model, go with 7. You can find them once or twice a year, maybe even uh, more, at extremely good price. So, uh, we covered that if I would buy it, yes, I would. Uh, and how small it is? No, it's not small. It's perfectly fine. It's big enough. Now, did I have any faults in the last year? Yes and no. I did not have any faults as it would stop dry from functioning, but I already created video where I described uh, tips and tricks and faults. Again, card will be popping up above any time. Uh, just a reminder that I don't know whether it's engineered not as well or it's not designed well or things not functioning well, but a couple of people already contacted me with the same fault that I'm experiencing here with my dryer. So when it's finished drying, you've got filter full and anti-crease uh, lights will stay on and dryer would beep as it has some sort of fault. Uh, first of all, there is no fault. I'm not sure why it's behaving that way, but it means the drying is finished and sensor sensing something is not right. And I think it's because and the way the ESATA position their sensors. So sensors are, uh, so you've got top filter here that kind of filters everything that's coming out of the drum. And you've got second filter uh, in here that prevents finer particles to go into heat sink of the dryer itself. And the, um, I think temperature and other sensors are in between in the channel here and because there's a lot of dust coming from a top filter to bottom filter you will see if you poke your head inside the dryer inside there you will see there's a lot of dust in this um, compartment there it's really hard to clean I created a video with tips and tricks how to clean heatsink but to be honest it's really hard to get any um, appliance inside to clean that space and I think that is creating problem with sensing uh, whether it pumps up uh, condensation of water out well or if there is a filter uh, blocked and I think it's getting a little bit confused but it's only throwing that error at the end of the drying cycle so if it beeps and says something um, like not something but three lights here and beeps it's not a fault. I mean, like it is a fault because by design it should not do this. But the drying is done, and you can uh, happily um, offload and sort your your drying. Now, uh, to do with uh, energy consumption and whether it's worthwhile to pay a little bit more for heat pump dryer, that is not a SATA specific question. But let me run numbers with you which to me, they almost like meaningless, but people asking for numbers, here are the numbers. So um, the drying on a normal uh, tumble dryer costs you approximately between 80 cents and a, and a dollar per drying, right? 
the cost of drying in a SATA between 15 to 30 cents. So it's consumed three times less energy. So if you purely buy your heat pump dryer for energy savings, first of all, I would not recommend that approach and I explain why in a second. The second is you um, save approximately third of electricity by using a heat pump dryer. So let's say uh, it has 365 days, you do approximately two drawings a, a, a week. So let's say 52 weeks, two drawings a week. So you dry, let's say, 100 times a year. So let's say on a tumble dry, it would cost you $300 and heat pump would cost you a $100. Um, so every year that you use tumble dryer, heat pump dryer, you save approximately $200 on drying. So that would, at the end of the life cycle, somehow um, even the price. But here's the big but. The reason why we moved on to heat pump dryers, it's actually not cost saving. It's really nice to save electricity. And if you don't run numbers, you can say, oh, look, it's so much better. Well, it's not. As you see, cost saving is not really there. It's on par. Where you do save money is how dryer treats your clothes. So normal, normal tumble dryer would heat up the air and blast your clothes with a hot air. And literally everyone who used tumble dryer would see how much damage it's creating the clothes. It's actually may even burn them, right? The heat pump dryer works differently. It's almost like um, air conditioner in reverse. It's actually dehydrate the clothes. Um, and you notice air conditioner in the summer, if cold air blows inside the room, the hot air will be blown on other side and out the unit. So that one is in the reverse. So hot air blows in and dehydrates. So first of all, it does not heat up your room. It does not create condensation in the room. So there's no danger of mold because when your tumble dry finish uh, uh, operation, all that uh, moisture that was in the dry got dispersed in the room. That's a mold creator. That's really dangerous operation. So first of all, it's really good for your health because there's no moisture in the room. Second, it's really good for uh, uh, money. I guess it's still better if you run like me, intend to run it for four or five years. And the third is most important, clothes are really expensive. It's very gentle on the clothes. It does not damage the clothes. So, uh, people asking me if I would again buy cheap heat pump as a SATA or I would go with a tumble dryer or a more expensive brand. To be honest, a SATA is and different budget dryers that based on the technology really ticks all the boxes for me. It does not damage the clothes. It's uh, economic and it does not create any moisture in my household or laundry and uh, there is no mold outbreak uh, danger. So that's another one. The third question is people asking me what is better uh, to collect water in a container here provided or drain it in. Uh, it's one of those things, it's not better or worse. If you don't want to be bothered by plumbing it in, by all means, collect it in the, in, the, in the container here. It's easy to take it out, empty it. After every single drying, I recommend to empty container because you don't want to get any moisture in, any overflow, and you don't want to uh, dry to stop in the middle of operation to tell you that the container is full. So empty it every time that you dry. I never do that because I plumb my in and I already created a video about this. So it drains uh, where uh, washing machine drains and he, he is, I don't have a big enough hole. So I just throw in the um, pipe in the sink and it drains into the sink. So I just make sure there's nothing in the sink because it does drain a lot of water out of closet that you put in. So. Uh, the answer your question, there's no difference from the dryer operational perspective whether to drain it in a sink or drain it in a, in a container provided with a dryer. The only difference is um, I don't think twice whether I need to empty a container. So to me, washing finished, I chuck everything in the dryer, dryer finished, I fold, iron and go. I just uh, don't have anything to maintain but 
two filters, the internal filter uh, and more uh, finer particles filter. Let's talk about filters. That's the same concept as a car. Filters and oil, something that you never save money on. Filters here, yes, they will notify you when filter is full. Please, if you would like to maintain longevity of the appliance, and uh, the whole simplicity of operation, do not skim on a, on a, uh, skim on a uh, emptying and cleaning filters. That's probably the most crucial bit for heat pump uh, dryers. The reason is that is they're not only collecting dust, they're also protecting internal heatsink element for compressor. When that element will get clogged, that's the end of life for your dryer. So most of the dryers actually stop working because of neglect, neglect and not because of the uh, mechanical or electrical fault. They actually build quite well in that regard. Uh, emptying filters, and if you empty them, you can notice that you, uh, even though you've got two filters before that heatsink, heatsink still collecting the dust. That's where, again, in my video of tips and tricks, I uh, describe how I carefully clean the heatsink of that dryer. So um, almost every vacuum cleaner will have some sort of brush and you vacuum it and, and, and cleaning filters is essential for this dryer. Now, another question people ask, uh, what do you think after a year of use? I'd say if you ever used uh, a luxury or not luxury, there's nothing luxurious about this, um, more reputable brand than Asata and paid a lot of money. Look, when you're going back to Asata, you feel the cheapness means nothing. And if you can get used to Asata, if I compare it to Samsung and look, if Samsung will cost same as Asata, I, 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 I'm honest with you guys, I would go with Samsung. But today, Samsung and Bosch and all of those still cost more than thousand dollars when Asata on a good uh, week month you can pick up around six hundred dollars so to me six hundred dollars is the right price to pay would i ever buy it again if it breaks yes i will but also uh, when i bought my asata they're all giving you two years warranty asata chuck in another year warranty for free when samsung a little bit harder than you if a plant's out of the warranty and you need to repair it so all in all to conclude Am I still happy about a SATA heat pump, heat pump dry after a year of use? Yes, I'm extremely happy. As you can see, it's still there, it's still functioning. How much I use it? I use it approximately two, three times a week, especially in the winter, summer. I save money, I put clothes outside on a sunny day, all good. In the winter, there's not enough sunlight a day to dry washing properly and also it's just convenient. It's just convenient to take it out of the washing machine, chuck in a dryer. So two or three dry cycles a week for the last year did not skip a bit. Now, thank you so much all for watching. I love the community. I love questions you ask. I love the way you drive me to create new videos and help this community. Extremely proud of all of you. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, would appreciate subscribing. Otherwise, until next time. Greg from Brisbane, Australia. Bye.